Ben Chandler, 1005 East Finland, Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Born in Stillwell, Oklahoma, in the territory, 1893. Now we go from there. Okay. All right, so first we'll start with your birthplace, your earliest. Birthplace of Stillwell, Oklahoma. And that was 1893, June the 7th. Something about your parents. Well, my mother came over the Trail of Tears from North Carolina. And her name? Fanny E. Chandler. It was sharp. It, or she was a sharp. Mm -hmm. Fanny and e. she sharp. walked all the way across the river. They put them across the river at, at Fort Smith. And her sister died and buried down on the bank of the River at Fort Smith, and then they come on up into Stillwell. My father was a merchant, and uh, he operated a store that what they call now Strawberry Springs. Mm -hmm. And from there on, was and uh, and he met your mother. Well, they were they they married in in the territory, mm -hmm. but he was a white man. But he had his hair down to his belt. And he was raised with Indians. He talked a good Indian language. Mm -hmm. So he came with him on uh, this Trail of Tears trip into the territory. Mm -hmm. Were there many who came that way? Just well, she home? told me there's four or five wagons and they brought their cows. They, we lived on a farm mm -hmm. after that and we kept one of them old cows till she died and raised a bunch of calves off of it. They thought so much of it. Yeah, an old cow walking tied behind the wagon. She said there was a, a lot of them died on the way. There was a great deal of sickness. Yeah, and the, the young children, she was 12 years old mm -hmm. at the time she came across. She, uh, the, uh, uh, the soldiers that, that uh, accompanied they them. Hung, they, they, they brought them to the Arkansas River, and that's where the soldiers quit them. They put them across the river and just turned them into the woods, you know. Uh, how did they manage to make their living? Well, they they farmed and, and of course they. I mean, until they could get their crops started. That I don't know how they. Uh, well, they they went to, went right into farming and and uh, my dad, father got it up here and opened up a store. He was a school teacher. He taught school. The Cherokees had so much culture. And yeah. They brought so much. Um, know-how. Yeah. Well, they had good farms where they, where they run them off from in North Carolina, Georgia, yeah. see. Mm -hmm. they, my, my mother's folks were considered pretty wealthy people in, in Georgia, see. Uh -huh. But they had to leave I'll everything there. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah, they were the mm -hmm. Marsh family, and they, they, were, they were pretty well off. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had slaves. They brought the slaves with them. Uh -huh. Come with them. Well, uh, when, they, when they settled here, uh, did they rebuild very much as they as their old homes were? Some of these houses that, uh, yeah. that you see now are very much oh. like the old uh, colonial yeah. homes. Yeah. Well, now the my old home place we we moved up to a place uh, called Prairie City and then changed down to Ogeechee. And uh, that's an Indian name. Yeah, that means coming daylight. Oh. And uh, we had a home there that we bought off a doctor. And that old house, I guess, 100 years old, and this Ogeechee Farms bought all that land, and they burnt it down here a while back. Oh. They ought to let that stood there, I thought. Yeah, well, you know. cool. You didn't mean it was burned on purpose. Yeah, the fellow who owned that Ogeechee Farms, his cattle ranch, burned it. And I went up there, it was burning one day, and I come by. I live in but I just happened to get up there. And there's a rock we had on the back doorstep that the Indians used to cover corn with. And it made in the shape of a fish, and they'd drug it, mm -hmm. they'd stick it down the ground, and then drag it over. I wanted to get that rock, but I couldn't find it. Somebody else got it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you're losing so much. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where was your education started? I didn't well, know your mother's name. Yeah, <laughs> I will get you. came from such culture, uh, evidently, you got a lot of that. Oh, yes. In your home. Well, she told me a lot. Of, I know a lot about what happened back in that country, back during the Civil War and all up through that. I mean, all, you know, I've got that all up there in my head, you yes. know. Well, well I started you? my first uh, career in the did education. They have, did they have a part in that? Did the Indians participate in, in the that? Civil War? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, 
were they more or less forced to or what? I, I don't know how. Uh, well, I think they were in a way that forced and they felt both. Because they made them go. Yes. You see, they could catch them. A lot of them took to the woods and hid mm -hmm. out. Well, they had to protect their property. Yeah. Some of them had. Well, homes. they the North would come through and take part of your stuff, and the South would come back. Yeah. Maybe give you some of it back. That's mm -hmm. the way they went, and they had their horses and mules. They'd have to take them out into the timber and hide them while the army was going through. Yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, <coughs> the freed king uh, and their President Jackson. Yeah, he's the man that run them out of out of North Carolina. Uh, when 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 that decree came, uh, do you remember what your mother, how she felt about it, how deeply? Well, they felt over bad. That's mm -hmm. I know that. Okay. So it was a serious problem for them, and something never happened well, before. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, did. Was your mother able to make her adaptation to Oklahoma or the Indian Territory it was then? Was she able to make her adaptation from... Oh, yes. Yeah. She adapted very, very well. Well, oh, yes. Well, she raised oh, a big oh, family. Oh. There's 10 of us. That's, oh, no. that's what it, <laughs> pretty that busy. Yeah. Um, then uh, your education, uh, aside from these stories yeah. that your mother told you, uh, was there a school building near there? Well, we went to school. First went to school. We went to a school called Fairland. And uh, they had to pay so much a day for us to go. And they wouldn't unlock the door. And they put up a big box. And the teacher and everybody crawled through the window, back in and out. And our desks were made out of goods boxes. You know, was, I went there for a while. And why would they make it? They uh, they got in they got into some kind of a racket over that. It was about that away for about a week or two before they even let us come in the door. So they and forbid you them. Them. They <laughs> them. Teachers and everybody. Yeah, everybody went through the right window. Well, went right on. They didn't stop. They friction deal, you know. Yeah. Well, now was that uh, because of the uh, lack of taxes to pay? Oh, I don't think so. I don't because of that. we. When they had to pay so much a day for us, so the Indian did the white people didn't have to pay. They just charging the Indians so much a day to go to school there. Then I went to a little old school, old Geechee, yeah. <laughs> back to old Geechee. And then from there to uh, to uh, the seminary, I guess. Yeah. I got seminary. Now that was taught in English. Mm -hmm, I taught in I went to seminary, and then the seminary burned down. I went to Brown's Business College there a while. And I went over to Drawn the Business College in Muskogee, and that's where I quit. I went to work for the Indian Department and worked for them mm -hmm. quite a while. So then that was a, a federal uh -huh, that's a federal uh, job. Federal mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, did you, during your time that you were in the seminary, uh, do you remember any particular subjects that you liked better than others? Well, I was only about 13 years old, see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, reading and writing and arithmetic was, seemed to be the big Those were big deal. That's, the, that's what we had. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something about that. Out there at the seminary, you could pay your board, you see. Or you could work for your board. Mm -hmm. So I worked for my board, washed dishes. They had a big dining room. There's about, oh, I don't know, a hundred more of them boys out there. And we had a lot of dishwashers, but they had a lot of dishwashers. Mm -hmm. And yes. they had a big trough back the back where they took the slop, you know. Out. If you broke a dish that they caught you with, they'd give you a demerit. They'd put the dish in a dish pan full of water and go throw it in that trough. <laughs> you go out there sometimes, see a trough half full of dish. <laughs> No, no, that was about that burning down. I don't know. How, my brother was there at that time. When it burned down, I wasn't there that year. Mm -hmm. But uh, they give them boys the marriage. You see, and if you had a demerit, you couldn't come to town. They let you come to town on Saturday. Every Saturday, if you didn't have any, and then get your record. So three or four old boys out there, and I think one of them boys thought, I'll get set it apart. Yeah, when he had demerit, he couldn't come. He was mad. Oh. Know? I went to everybody was kind of selfish when they get a, get yeah. mad. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that could have been. It could have been so. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what he told me. That, and he, I think he knew 
Well, he knew the boy. Mm -hmm. But you know what happened out there. So this business of uh, retaliation is it a new and rebellion no, is not, not new, nothing is new. It? It's not new, but what happened out there? They, they all lost all their clothes. Mm -hmm. Everything they had got burned up, and yeah. then the time then, you know, money was tight. Oh, yeah. It took money to buy clothes. So me and my brother went out there, and we had one pair of Sunday shoes. We'd come to church here on Sunday. That's what they sent us over every Sunday morning. We'd all march to church here. He'd go one Sunday, and I'd wear the shoes. Next Sunday, he'd go, well, I'd go. See him. He'd wear, I'd wear the shoes. <laughs> and you wore the shoes. Well, I wore the shoes. Let's go down here with it today. The shoes were made difficult to come by. You ain't kidding. We had that one Sunday pair, and then the pair for the wear through the week, mm -hmm. you know. But to tell you about that board, those fellows that paid board, they had to scrub that whole building once a month, even they did pay board. You know. Take the uh, stairways and everything had to be scrubbed. We, the, us fellows that were working for a board, didn't have to do that. You, you, you did yours on the dishes. On the, on the dishes, dishes, dishes in a broom. Yes. Uh, were the food scary dishes? Oh, it, it's scary. good food. It's good food, but them boys always claim it. Must have been nourishing food. Yeah, well, and cornbread and beans and stuff like that. It'll stay with you. But a lot of them boys griped about it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but they had, we had some colored cooks. Had two colored cooks. And, and uh, one of these colored cooks had a buggy and a horse, and I took care of his horse. So I get a piece of cake once in a while nobody else get. You know, we had a hole punched in the wall, so he had to go up the stairway to his room. You push it through the hole. <laughs> and the, uh, uh, the dating customs, you were 13, you were a little bit young yeah. for that, but your brother not. Yeah, he's older than I, about yes. two years. Yes. Yes. Just about two years. Tell us that. Yeah, he's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the only one living out of four brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, uh, on the Cherokee, Looking after the Indians, and mm -hmm. I worked through the whole five tribes you know, mm -hmm. as assistant field clerk and you know, land appraiser and mm -hmm. government farmer and what have you. Know. And we went out, we had to go out and buy everything that, that they, right. they had, to, if they had money in the mm -hmm. department. And you could buy them stuff, and before they get home, they'd sell it to all they ever wanted to get a hold of the money, you know, buy them a load of wire to go out to fence home and go out to fence. Couldn't find a bar while he sold it. And they'd sell it. We'd buy teams for them, mules. And they'd sell them. How did they use it for? But, oh, they tried to farm a little bit, a little mm -hmm. patchy. But they, they do. They, this, uh, we used to buy them a team of mules. But all, all, they didn't have any title invested in them because they belonged to the government. We branded them USID. Yeah. Well, they'd uh, wait in the wintertime and the hair go down over them brand. And they could they'd sell them somebody. We'd find out about them. We'd get them, bring them back. I'll just lose. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, uh, the, the Indians, uh, uh, was there very much resentment toward the, the federal authorities? Well, oh, yes, there was quite a bit. Quite a bit. They didn't like statehood either. They never well, received yeah. the territory went into the mm -hmm. state. They didn't like that. They wanted it their own. Yeah. Uh, in the elections, if you can remember, could you tell us something about the Cherokee election? Yes. No, I don't know much about that. They, you see, they had their council house and mm -hmm. they had their chief and their assistant chief, and then they elected their councilmen. Maybe I, I think there were ten or twelve of those councilmen, mm -hmm. and then they, they developed. And of course, it's like we told you a while ago. Mm -hmm. They have the two parties. And then they'd have their election. Right. They, they mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know too much about that. It's been too far back for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the, um, uh, the coming election, 
I understand there might be more than the one candidate uh, in the coming election. Now, uh -huh. you mean this the one in August? Yeah, well, yes. It's, it's, uh, there's uh, Keeler is one, and then well, they, I don't he, know. He has been for. Uh, yeah, oh, I know he had. I know him. Uh huh. But this and fellow Groundhog so started to run, but I, I understand he's quit on this other fellow. Keen is, I had a letter from him that he's trying for it, but I don't know how to put this, because the whole tribe will vote. Uh -huh, but the election will be in August. Yeah, it's in August. Mm -hmm. Is uh, And how far is still the, the capital? Capital, uh-huh. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Um, then the voting will be done here. Yeah, it'll be done here. Oh, I, I have an idea you can mail in your vote. I, I imagine because we've already had mm -hmm. sign an application for uh, mm -hmm. vote. Well, blank. do you have to, uh, you have a certain amount of Cherokee blood? Or as long well, as you have not, any? not necessarily that. If, if you're on the rolls, you've got to have a roll number before you can vote. That's right. That's and the don't they, it's not a degree of blood. Uh -huh. It is established already. Yeah, it's already. Well, yeah, we have roll books. Mm -hmm. got, it's uh, the roll numbers in it. They say that's one of the most perfect geological books. and genealogies. They kept books that he yeah. had. Uh, I just noticed they had this little old payment here a while back. They had some new ones made. I had an old one there. They're, they're an antique if you can get a hold of them. You, mm -hmm. well, I worked for the department. There was plenty of them. You could just pick up one up there and where we want to go. But now you can't find them. I got one my sister in law got, I never will get it back, but <laughs> I'd like to have it. But I was up there at J and they had some new ones I'd sure like to have one of them or bigger prints, you know. Mm -hmm. And then of course it's clean, them old ones have been used. The voting then will be uh, by the the uh, new roll. Yeah. Well it'll just be uh, I imagine it'll be like if you were to vote in an absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. See. But you're going to have to seal that and send it in down here, and then they'll count them right here at Tahlequah. Oh, I see. And I think that's the way that'll come out. Mm -hmm. Well, there probably won't be too much uh, uh, competition. Uh, no, I don't think so. Like I don't think so. I don't think there's any question about it. From my mind, Keeler done such a good job, good job. and then he's smart. He's smart enough. Well, yeah, that's, he's, he's worked at I've it. I've heard him speak. I, well, I know him. <laughs> Uh, uh, back to the uh, seminary. Uh, when the uh, uh, seminary building was changed, uh, the uh, female seminary, and was moved to here, after that fire, and then this building was put up. About what year was that? Well, that was in 19 and 10 when they had fire out there. Now but that was the uh, but the, the 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 male seminary was out there and the female seminary was here. And then then after the fire, they turned this into what they call the normal. That is oh, yeah. for school teachers to finish oh, their their education and training. And uh, it wasn't but this one building over here. No. And how much has it changed? Oh, it's changed a lot. You wouldn't know it. I didn't. If I didn't know where yeah. it's at, you know. You okay. They still keep the name, and it yeah. is that yeah. it is the yeah. original old. Now that old seminary out there, but that Indian uh, museum or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you notice there's the two the pillars there. Mm -hmm. Now that that was the original male seminary, and I think both the. That's where the fire was. No, that was fire. No, they had two fires. They had this other one burned out mm -hmm. too. Easy. But that was, I think the girls and boys both went to school together. That was what my father told mm -hmm. me because. Bob Garrett was superintendent there, and that was way back before my time almost. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned that your father was a white man because he came with the. He came with them. He's raised with them, see, and he talked their language better than they did. Uh -huh. Well, was that uh, he raised with them because of uh, the neighborhood in which he, he lived? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. of course, then there was very little distinction. Uh, yeah, it not, was just a. Uh, um, a neighborhood, a neighborhood, movement. neighborhood movement, and there's mm -hmm. a neighborhood surrounding. See, mm -hmm. and it was a little, yeah. Yeah. yeah, interest concerning purchasing of places. And yeah, that's right. Um, uh, do you remember something of early day Tahlequah? Well, uh, about what nineteen and eight. I don't know whether I'd call that yeah. early day or late. Yes. There wasn't very yes, much here. Was a few uh, drugstore down there, and Thompson's at a hotel. Yes. 
And um, this old spring was open right down here. You used to water the horses at a spring right down here on the foot of the hill. You know where you go over that little place down there across the little walk over? Oh. It was a big spring there. Delco got their water there. That was the city. Yeah, that's city water. And horse for horse, and they had a big trough there for water your horse. My sister mm -hmm. lived right up here. Ms. Walking Stick and had a horse. I bring him down and water him every day for her. Yeah. But then Dogtown, well, that's what this was like back up here with this college. Dogtown. Dogtown. That, that's a tough part of town. Oh, that's what they call it. Yeah, Dogtown. And who, 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 who were they? Oh, they? Yeah. Well, that's what my, my sister and, and everybody in town recognized that. As it was the moonshiners and crap shooters that lived mm -hmm. up in there, you know. Well, I'll tell you a little deal. We had a ball was team it, out there. Were uh, they saloons sometimes? No, they're bootlegging it. It's a bootlegging it. And one of the bo seminary boys killed a bootlegger over here one night. And we had a ball team, and he was the catcher. So we had a big game match for Sunday, and he was in jail. And we had to have him come over here, sent the professor Clark come over here and talk to the city, and they sent two officers out there with him. He caught the ball again. <laughs> <laughs> While the officers waited. While the officers waited. Yeah. They got to see the game anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, early day history tells of the Cherokee Nation having very strict laws about criminals like this. They did. And uh, that even hanging. That's right. Was the very severe penalty. Well. And that perhaps kept them as. Uh, uh, it, it kept them uh, respecting authority and law. They were people who disrespect the law. Uh, do you remember any, how far back were they? Well, they, now my mother, uh, they moved to Stillwell, and father had a store there, and she held, uh, old Judge Parker, you probably mm -hmm. heard of him, he held court over there ever, uh, once or From twice Fort ever, Smith. in Fort Smith. Mm -hmm. And she took for the court when they'd hold court, had all of them. Mm -hmm. And she told me that she'd stood in the kitchen door and saw 13 hung. And it's just so Stillwell, bad. Is that Stillwell? Stillwell, it's a what's that up there? Bluff mm -hmm. Stillwell. It's a, they call it Strawberry Springs. It's in the same little neighborhood. So gone, you know, now. Well, is the, was there a tree, a scaffold? Well, they had a scaffold. And they but they, they hung them hog stealing <laughs> over there. And then, and then Judge Parker deserved his name. Oh, Judge, yeah. I read the book on him where he hung seven in one day. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a book on it. Hell on the Border. You ought to get hold of that and read it. It's true. What's the name of it? Hell on the Border. Who wrote it? Judge Parker's. It's, it's, it's his history. My old book's yellow. I've got it. It's the old one. But then. I wonder when it was published. I don't know. But I read that thing, and, and I know a lot of the people, you know, who they are. Yeah. And some of the people, and it's it's true. I don't know where you'd find that. May not be in print. And it may not be. Hell on the hell on the border. <laughs> and it's the biography of Judge Parker. Yeah. Well, I, I know a lot of it's true because I know about it. You know. And I'm, your mother witnessed the hanging. Yeah, she said she she saw mm -hmm. thirteen different people hung over there, mm -hmm. just from the kitchen door. Mm -hmm. or the kitchen must have been. Close to this uh, capital or something. I know that the Cherokees were very strict, and and I know that that's one way they established their yeah. their law and their order. Uh, was there ever any in Tahlequah, or do you remember of any hung here? No, it, no, it no, no. The only one that's been hung in, in Oklahoma was hung in um, in Ottaway County, mm -hmm. since statehood. That's the only one hanging it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the prior to statehood. When it was Indian territory. Well, no, they had them all in Fort Smith and, uh, and up here at this, where they had this capital, Strawberry Spring. It's mm -hmm. called Thorn Snake Courthouse, what it was. That's the name of the place. Thorn, oh. Thorn Snake Thorn Court. Snake. Thorn Snake Courthouse. Courthouse. Mm -hmm. That's Strawberry Spring. Yeah, well, that, now it's Strawberry Spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was Thorn Snake. So, yeah. That's the old name for it. Thorn Snake Courthouse. Uh huh. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the. Uh, uh, the, the law as applied by Judge Parker, uh, 
It certainly was. He was, he was it. Uh, well, they <coughs> they get the fellow that they'd run him from now on. They taught him. They they all run to the territory. See when they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. But they got him. Then it wasn't the it wasn't this uh, element from places like Dogtown. No. But it was the people who came coming and going both yeah. ways. See. Because they thought there was no law. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what they run in here for. But they, they had marshals they out. out. They they sent out marshals. Mm -hmm. Heck, them marshals, a lot of them killed them on the out. Never brought them in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, this was considered by them a place where there would be no law. That's yeah, that's right. right. That, that's where they found out. Different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the territories were very strict. Yeah. And very, uh, uh, well, the, par the this department. Had been, this had yeah. been a very lawless thing. After that, uh, the Department of Interior. And I was working for them. I had Indian police all over the country working for, with the field clerks and that. Yes. In, Indian agents. They got Indian police, Indian police in Muskogee. Mm -hmm. Set up there all day long. I don't they, know what they done. <laughs> they were, were they uniformed people? Or they? Oh, some of them, some of them not. Mm -hmm. Most Jan were just plain clothes, but that's what yeah. the position they were was. responsible to the uh, Indian government? Yeah, yeah to, the the Indian, the, to both. Both. The, both, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, Indian uh, courts, for instance, uh, uh, did they try their their own uh, tribal people that were in Arizona? Yeah, they were way back in the early days they did, and mm -hmm. and then if they sentenced them to be hung or whatever the sentence was, mm -hmm. if he wanted to go home and stay a month, they let him go home and stay a month and somebody else can go home and stay another spot. Mm -hmm. And never was one failed to come back. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did they enforce that? They didn't have anything. They just told him, and that was it. They had that much? And that, that much confidence. They they self respect. Self respect. Mm -hmm. they, 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 a lot of them come back and be hung. After being Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was no bond. Uh, it was just a word. He'd just tell you how long he had for your business, and then just take care of how long it took him. You got any time and you come back. Yeah, I worked uh, here a no, several years ago in the sheriff. I worked sheriff's office long enough. Up in the jail, we had no linen up there. So I mean, they wanted to work on the road and get paid double time. Mm -hmm. Told him, all right, he went out then. He didn't come in when the rest of them they were gone. So he sent me word that he had to go home, cut some straw wood. He'd be back in 10 days. <laughs> 10 days, he'd come back. <laughs> He won't run out of strength. Yeah, I thought it was a bit more yet. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me something more about your mother and uh, your father on the train at Sears. Well, about were they in a wagon? Or well, they, they had a wagon. They had. A, she said she walked all the way. There wasn't room in the wagon. They had all they their stuff. The they brought uh, everything they could bring, and, see. Mm -hmm. and then they brought these cows. Yeah. Tied them cows behind the wagon. And I think it brought How long were they on that? Oh, I don't know how long they were on that long time. It was a very severe. It was, it was a long walk, she told me. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of sickness. Who gave it the name of the trail of tears? Do you remember? No, I don't. But I have not. They developed that themselves. As they came along. As they came along. What else could it have been? That's right. And uh, I have often wondered whether that was a historian. No, the I think the people that, that were on the yeah, on the trail, that, mm -hmm. because it was, you know, there was bound to be tears because oh, they lost so many yeah, of them. They, they had a lot of sickness. Um, how many, what percentage was it that died on the trail? I don't remember I've now. I've forgotten the number. I know, there's quite a lot of them, according to what she said. Mm -hmm. The ones that did get through is that very yeah. fortunate. Yeah. Uh, um, they, uh, these, these stories of the trail of tears should be recorded, and uh, as many as you can remember, uh, we should we should get those for now. Yeah. If you can kind of call back and make notes on it, we ought to get those stories. So well, you, you just have to patch them up from place to place. Though. Well, if you can keep your notes, we yeah. can do the rest. If you well, can, I I don't know. Uh, that's all I know. Again on it and, uh, and if you could. 
could remember some of her. I know she, she told me that now she was 12 years old mm -hmm. and that they walked all the way and that she said she waded the stream this deep mm -hmm. getting across them mm -hmm. and they walked from in down to uh, Fort Smith and the army followed them the men did it so they put them on a boat and pushed and put the boat took them over on the other side of the river and that's where they quit them and that's about all I know about that uh, if that, if we could get more of the actual happening. Yeah, what the took place. Uh -huh. now. Yeah. Like you, you well, know, well they're all gone. Well, I mean they are, but but you, yeah, yeah. you see, yeah. that was totally to you. Yeah, My yeah, yeah, yeah. Very important. Yeah. Very important to your sister. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Right. It's been so nice to talk with you, and I've enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Um, thank you.